Hi everybody and welcome to Push Your Luck video. My name is Eric and today we'll be looking at New York 1901. Now this is a 2015 release by first time designer uh, Chanel LaSalle. Uh, and he is a, apparently he's a Canadian diplomat according to BGG. And this is, uh, New York 1901 is published by Blue Orange Games. And this is by the art, you can see it's by my favorite uh, artist Vincent Dutre. So um, New York 1901, I thought it was kind of fitting that uh, I played this game. I, I seek out this game and play this game because after all, I'm currently in New York. Um, this is my birthday gift uh, from my co-host uh, Jonathan all the way from Singapore. So thank you Jonathan for this gift. New York 1901 plays two to four players and takes about 45 minutes to play. And it is um, on the surface when you look at it, it is like a simple family game where you are laying down, you're building skyscrapers in uh, in a small area of New York, or actually it's like almost like downtown New York in a way. And so uh, players will be vying for spots, uh, trying to get the right uh, location card so that they can get the le correct land tiles and then build skyscrapers on them and score points. So whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. So let's take a look at um, the components of New York 1901, um, how it plays and my th final thoughts about the game. Alright, so these are the components you get uh, in New York 1901. First, you get a very big, uh, quite a big board uh, where you'll be playing your game on. You'll see that this uh, features I think down, downtown New York where you see Wall Street, Broad Street, Pine Street and uh, Broadway for example. So this features just one particular set uh, of location for of New York. Uh, each player will also have a whole set of uh, building tiles. So these are your skyscrapers. Um, they are very nice thick tiles and they, they show you a, a nice, very nice picture of a skyscraper that you're building. Uh, the interesting, oops, the interesting thing to note though is that um, the, the these skyscrapers, when you put them onto the the road itself, on the board itself, you'll be placing them face down. So it's kind of strange to imagine that while it the building looks like it's a very tall skyscraper, it should look like that when you place it on a board. But unfortunately, when you place it on the board, you're actually placing it uh, lying down. So that's kind of a disconnect in a the theme, but that's just a small quibble. Um, the building tiles also show you how many points you get. How many points you get, as well as uh, which age you can build them in. So, for example, in this case, I'll get five points after I build this skyscraper, and it is also in the silver age. So, there's three different ages of skyscrapers you can build: the bronze age, which is like so, the bronze age, the silver age, and then there's the gold age. So, the gold age is the final age of uh, skyscrapers that you can build. Each player will also have four of these, uh, like workers. Uh, this is this will allow you to lay claim to a land tile, remind people that this land tile belongs to you, and then later on you can replace it with a skyscraper. So it's like uh, they are building the foundation, and then they then they will build up the building later on. So you can see they are, they are incredibly detailed. You uh, each of them uh, has a little bag and uh, the the steel girdle that they are holding on to is so it looks quite cool. I've seen some pictures on Board Game Geek where they painted it and it looks really nice. Each player will also have. Um, three of these action cards um, that they can use during the game. So these action cards are explain what they mean later on. Uh, but when the game ends, and if you s still have them in your hand, each of them is worth one point. Um, there are also these big objective cards. All right. So uh, three of them will. Uh, there's there's five of each type of uh, objective cards. Uh, one type is the roads and the other type is the uh, other bonus objectives. So the roads, you'll be choosing three out of five for your game and then you place them face up so that people can see. So for example, in this case, uh, Nasir and Broad, uh, whoever has the most skyscrapers touching this particular stretch of road will get five points. All right? And if you are tight, then no one gets the points. All right, so you also have these um, uh, end of uh, game bonus cards which, uh, which will tell you there's only one of it uh, out of the five you only choose one and then the rest are discarded uh, they're not used in the game so these this will mean that uh, whoever has uh, four buildings at the end of four bronze building at the end of the game will get fi five more points five bronze building at the end of the game ten more points and six bronze buildings at the end of the game we have 15 more points these cards are rather thin uh, thin quality cards uh, but they're still functional. You can probably sleep them if you wanted to. Although this size would be a bit more difficult to find. There are also a whole stack of uh, land tile cards. Alright, you can see here. These are the land, land tiles and they 
each of them will correspond to one particular slot on the board. Uh, and they will come in sizes of two, so this will represent a green uh, two square lot. This will, it's a blue two square lot. And also in uh, threes, so this will be a, a three uh, straight line for blue or three L shape for blue. Right. You can also see them on the board easily. So for example, you can see this the 3L shape for blue. Uh, this is a 2 two lot for blue. This is 2 lot for blue, 2 lot for blue. All right. So it's quite clearly it's quite clearly demarked on the board. Each player will also have one player 8 uh, tile in a way to indicate who you are. Um, just to add a bit of fluff to the game. So in this case, if you have this, that means you, if you play the beginner game, you are starting with um, a blue... Uh, blue two square lot and as well as you'll be put, placing your starting building on where the eagle is so in this case the eagle would be here all right so you'll be start, starting here in this case uh, it doesn't mean that if you start there you must build around it it's just just a, for the beginning game you just have a building on the board now if you play the advance you will not start with this at all uh, on the other side of the the player 8 card, you will be able to see uh, the actions that are available for the game. So there's two different actions you can take in a game, and I'll explain what uh, they do when I explain the rules. So, yeah, so all in all, the components are very nice. You can see the artwork is really be beautifully done. Again, as I mentioned, I really like Vincent Dutre and his artwork, and you can see it's, it's very nicely done and colored, uh, and it fits the team very well. So well done, Blue Orange Games and uh, Vincent Dutre. So let's go to how do you play the game itself. Now, um, during your turn, you are supposed to... Let's go back to the player 8 card again, uh, tile again. During your turn, you're supposed to do two actions. The first action is you can claim a, a lot card. All right, so these are lot cards. There's always four available for you to choose from. You claim a lot card, and then you put a worker there. And then after that, you, you this is optional. This building part is optional. You can uh, build a skyscraper by placing your uh, building tile onto a lot that fits the lot, uh, that, that fits the building tile, as well as you, you, you already own it. All right, so again, the first action you can do is to claim a lot, uh, a building lot card, put your worker on the uh, particular building lot that corresponds to the card you just took. And then you can optionally also build, in addition, you can build a uh, skyscraper onto any lot that you have uh, claimed. Previously, all right. Even in the current turn, you can also do that as well. So, for example, how do I do that? Let's say, let's say, I, I, this is the the tiles I have. I chose this one, for example. So this is a yellow two, right? Yellow two, uh, yellow two squares. So I can claim like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one. Yeah, and and there are some here as well. So if I look at where I want to go, for example, I want to go Wall Street. So Wall Street is where I'm going to score points. For, for this particular game. So I want I want to claim this. So I can take the two and put my uh, worker there. Now during that turn as well, I can immediately choose to build on this or I can wait subsequent turns and then build on it later. So if I do that, I'll just take my worker away. If I build, for example, I just take my worker away. And because right now we are in the bronze age, we, at the start of the game, it's always a bronze age. I'll take this. So it's a bronze age. You can see the color there. It's two squares, so it fits the, the two lot that I took. That I just claimed, and I can put it on like so. Then I merely score two points. All right. Whenever you build a skyscraper, you merely score two points. And when you build a skyscraper, you must make sure that one part, one side of the skyscraper touches the road. This is to is to simulate that you must have an entrance to your skyscraper. So for example, I cannot build a skyscraper here like like so. All right. Later on, if I manage to claim claim uh, other lots, I can always uh, build the skyscraper there onto the lots that I, I already own. All right, the, the skyscrapers that you build onto the lot does not need to be the same size. It can be smaller, it can be, uh, but it cannot be larger. Uh, all right, so, um, so that's the first action you can do. So again, the first action you do, claim a lot card. All right, claim a lot card and then uh, put your worker there and then optionally you can also build something. So if in subsequent times you want to build something, you must first claim a lot card, put a worker there and then you can build. So that's the first action you can do. The second action you can do is to demolish and, and replace. So what happens is you are demolishing as this thing skyscraper that you have and then uh, upgrading it to something else. Alright, so when you upgrade it, you must always upgrade to the next age. That means bronze to silver, silver to gold or bronze to gold. 
right? But once you reach gold, you can never demolish the gold skyscraper anymore, and that means you cannot upgrade it anymore. Anything that you up demolish will be thrown, uh, will be will be removed from the game, so you cannot reuse them again. So, for example, if I built this previously here, all right. So, uh, and and depending on which version you're playing, you can only upgrade once you reach a number of points. All right. What what do I mean by that? That means that if you play the expert version, for example, after you reach ten points, all right, then you can build. Uh, silver silver age buildings. After you reach 20 points, then you can build uh, gold age buildings. So for example, in this case, let's say I have already gotten uh, uh, past 10 points or 10 points. Now I can build a silver, silver building, for example. Alright, so I could... Uh, oh, let me take a silver building to show you what I mean. So for example, in this, this case, I, this is a silver building. Alright, you can see that it's four squares. Four squares and it's five points. So in this case, uh, I already own this particular lot, this L-shaped lot and this one. So what I can do is I can demolish this one and then replace it like so. And I'll get uh, f uh, five points. All right, because in a way you kind of own this whole lot. So this is what you can do with this thing. So you are demolishing and you build over uh, the, the previous building and then your a lot that you own. So this I get uh, five points now. All right, this thing that you demolish, you remove it from the game, but you do not uh, reduce your points. All right, whatever points you have, you get it. You you don't uh, reduce points in the game. All right, so it's a fam family friendly game. That is how you can upgrade as well. All right, so um, so yeah, it's quite simple. Those are the two actions you can do uh, during your turn. Now, uh, as as you progress, you might want to use the three action cards that you have available for you, available for you. All right. So, what do these three cards mean? This card means that you can now claim uh, two, uh, two square lots during one turn. So when you play this, you can really I, I can claim this two immediately, for example. But I cannot use it to claim a three square lot. All right. That's why the three is cancelled out here. This one means that I can. Take all the four cards that's in the market before I start. Uh, before I do my turn, I play this card. I see the four uh, lot cards I do not want. I I move them aside first. I draw four new lots and take the four that I just replace and shuffle them underneath the deck. All right. So this is what this means. This means that you can now do an additional build action. So for example, if I if I taken uh, this first action, I I did the take a lot. I can build that. If I play this card, I can do additional build action. If I do a demolish, for example, all right. After I do this, I can play this card and also do additional build action. Okay. So you keep doing this. Each player will take their turn and keep doing this until uh two ways that the game can end. First way the game can end is if one player has four leftover skyscrapers, that will trigger the ending condition, and the player who trigger it will that will be his last turn. Every other player will get one more turn and then we count points and see who wins. The other way to trigger end game is if there's only three cards left and there's no more deck left, which means that uh, when a deck runs out, there's, there will be four cards like that. And that player, if he chooses to do one of the actions, there'll be three cards less, that, that player will have his last action and then every other player will have one more turn. So again, another way to end is if there's only three cards left and there's no more cards to replenish the deck, uh, the market then. Alright, then you count points. So end of game scoring would be um, the roads as well as the bonus one here. And then, uh, yeah, whoever has the most points will win the game. Now, the last thing I for I did not mention yet is that there are these uh, star skyscrapers that you can build. Alright, so these are the star skyscrapers. There's four of them. They will give you 13, 12, 10, and 9. So these uh, are, are available for anyone to claim. So they, they could either claim it by building it. Uh, let's say if I had um, positioned it correctly in this way, for example, I own this, I own, I own this, I own this, and I own... I own this one. So I own all this. I could, uh, I could when I put this down here, for example, I could then build this on top of this. So I, this will become mine. All right. I'll take away all the workers and put them back in my head, in my stock. I claim this and I'll put my trophy there. Ta da! Now I own. I have built uh, Woolworth. All right. So that will be how I I get that, and that will be claimed by me, and no one else can claim it anymore. So the rest of the players can only. Uh, build any of the rest, and you can only build one of these special uh, skyscrapers. Uh, only one of this in the entire game, so you need to choose properly and choose wisely. All right, and yeah, and that's it. 
uh, the Endgame Scrying also, if you have not used any of these three special cards, you will get uh, one point each as well. And then whoever has the most points will win uh, New York 1901. So let's go to my final thoughts about New York 1901. Alright, so what do I think of uh, New York 1901? I really like it a lot. Uh, on the onset, when I first look at it, you may think, oh, it's quite a simple game, it's a family game, it should be quite easy to play, uh, may not really offer much. But when you start playing it, uh, especially when you play with very cut, uh, cutthroat um, players and they know how to like mess with you, they purposely block you, play, uh, get locked so that they can block you and prevent you from building those uh, fancy, bigger and uh, more weirdly shaped skyscraper tiles. All right, that's when it, when, that's when you can see that oh, the game actually has a lot of uh, depth to the game. All right, as in you can see that a lot of players can think strategically, know when to sabotage you, know when to mess you and stuff like that. It is actually quite interesting. And that's when then the uh, the three extra cards will come into play. So you you may initially think that, oh, I'm, I'm not going to use the three cards, I'm going to get three more points. But in a game where the average scoring is about uh, 80 to 90 points or so, those three points are actually not a lot. And uh, But the powers that they give you are actually quite powerful, as in they help you to uh, mitigate if people purposely gang up against you and stuff like that. So they do give you a, a bit of mitigation against that. Um, players need to need to actually actively block the leader uh, and it's quite easy to see how many points you score because everything is laid out on the board uh, you can calculate you can plan and that's where uh, some analysis paralysis can come in and this is uh, for a family game this is actually can be quite a very quiet game because people are always looking at the board calculating and thinking okay how many skyscrapers do i now have on the roads that will score me points later on and uh to, should I demolish it or do I do something else? The kind of thing. So, um, it is a surprisingly quiet game when I played it. Uh, there's also a lot of like, oh, you can disturb other, you can disturb your players, and you can uh, like uh, like threaten them and 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 you no know, friendly threatening and stuff like that. But for the most part, most of the games I played so far is very quiet because people are always thinking, looking on the board, and always thinking what they are going to do next. Uh, the Having the market, uh, having a two tiles, uh, the two lot cards and the three lot cards is pretty interesting because um, when you're playing this game, a lot of the building tiles that you have, right, as you can see some of the building tiles here, they are of different shapes. For example, you have you have this shape here, this skyscraper shape here. So uh, knowing what lot cards to claim and then what you can build is key to the game. And it's, it's, it is like a little puzzle. So you have all these things in front of you. You know that these everybody will have the same set of tiles. Uh, how can you claim the lot cards the most efficiently such that you can put as many of your buildings down as possible without demolishing them? Because when you demolish them, you're removing them from the board. And then, uh, in a way, you are kind of giving up that uh, bonus 5 points for the, the most skyscrapers on the road. And those points sometimes can rack up. Uh, especially if you... If you uh, do not pay attention to the end of uh, game bonuses, those points can really rack up and, and score a lot more points. So, uh, so for us, a game that is easy to get into, it's not that difficult to learn the game, not that difficult to play the game. There is quite a surprising amount of depth uh, to the game. There's quite a lot of things that you can consider and think about and play. And uh, I think uh, it is a game that new gamers New gamers who come into the uh, the the board game world can appreciate and enjoy the game, and even heavy gamers who want to think and want to strategize and want to uh, fight each other for position and stuff like that can also enjoy the game. So, uh, for I think this blue orange games first uh, foray into a uh, more heavier uh, uh, games, all right, and so uh, and it is a it is a success. I would say it's a success. Uh, it is very well designed very uh the art is gorgeous it plays very well there isn't any difficulties i see so far i'm not too sure about scaling wise because it plays two to four i'm not too sure about whether if you play two players whether there'll be less uh, interaction but i guess it depends on the players and how they how they want to play against each other so uh new york 1901 uh, i recommend it uh and uh, thanks again to jonathan for sending me this, cop uh, this copy for my birthday. So uh, this is New York 901, recommend it, go get it, and thanks for watching!